Adromalek is a demon that appears in the world of Ivelisse, aka the Final Fantasy Tactics Final Fantasy XII universe. I'll primarily be focusing on Final Fantasy XII, but I will be referencing all mentions from both games for his mannerisms, behavior, and of course, all that jazz. In Tactics, he is a dim human with a dark green goat face, brown horns, teeny wings, and orange sleeves. Here in Tactics Advance, they beefed him up a little, and while they fundamentally kept the same color scheme, everything else was made more intricate, and the wings increased in size. He's also flying, which is always cool. Tactics Advance came out in 2003, and Final Fantasy XII was was released in 2006, so it would appear that his design in 12 was heavily influenced by the previous iteration. Adromalek is the fourth Lukavi demon that goes toe to toe with ya boy Ramzabo Ramzabiov Bil Bilv Bov. Never knew how to say that. The Lukavi are demons in the Final Fantasy Tactics world that work under the cover of the Church of Glabados to revive Ultima, the High Seraph. They're connected to these stones called Orosite, also known as the Zodiac Stones, and that serves as a conduit for the Lukavi to exist in physical form. As you can guess, since we're dealing with the Zodiac, a drama like belongs to the Zodiac Capricorn, the Sea Goat. He had a wide variety of abilities. He could conjure fire, lightning, and ice on top of being able to petrify, disable, or silences foes. The Zodiac theme is lost in Final Fantasy Tactics Advance when he becomes a guardian of the crystals that reps the Banga, but that's a whole other story. In this game, his power seems to be pretty stripped by comparison. He can move lightning fast and do physical damage with light speed, decrease the speed of his enemies, and deal fire damage. Final Fantasy XII changed him from a guardian to a straight up demon. Known as the Emperor among Scions, he was created in opposition to Dudelfal- Fuck, man. Dudelafon, the benevolent Scion of Light. Adromalek eventually rose to prominence in the other world where he led a demonic horde against the gods, but in typical bad guy fashion, he loses. Following the trend, his abilities here are nothing like the previous versions. With a heavy affinity to lightning, he's able to cast Thundara and Thundaga and absorbs lightning damage 100%. If you're like most people, you've probably had the thought, what kind of name is that? It's okay, that's natural. He was a god that originated in Assyrian mythology, and it was said that children were sacrificed to him within a heated bronze statue. But there's no concrete archaeological proof of that, since no one has found those statues at the moment. This god is considered to be a demon in Judeo-Christian tradition, generally shown with a human torso and head, and the rest of the body of a mule, or peacock, or some combination of the two. A Adromalek is also referred to as the Makara Lagna, which is a Sanskrit name for the Capricorn of it, tying in further with Final Fantasy Tactics' Zodiac roots. It is speculated that his name could have derived from the Akkadian Adad Milki, which translates roughly to Lord of the King or Adad is King. Jones's Dictionary of Old Testament Proper Names reads Magnificence of the King, but adds that perhaps in Persian this name means King of Fire, which fire in this case would mean the sun. The same text goes on to say that this may also refer to the Babylonian god named Adar. So the first part of the name might have Assyrian or Babylonian roots, but also shares a striking similarity to the Hebrew word Adar, meaning to be majestic. The noun Melech is usually translated as king, but is actually the most common word for chief magistrate. To summarize, Adromalek has ancient Mesopotamian origins, and his name roughly translates to Majestic King or Magnificence of the King. Traditionally, in Judeo-Christian texts, he is described as a man-mule-peacock hybrid, and I didn't mention this before, but had more ambition, guile, and mischief than Satan, a fiend more cursed and an enemy of God. So this dude was pretty high up on God's why did I create this again list. The Adromalek in Final Fantasy XII seems to lend his background to the Judeo-Christian mythos, which is good, it means we're onto something, but that also means that I have to dig up some weird text. I'm gonna be pretty well acquainted with this book as the series continues, I'm sure, but be warned, this episode's about to look like some kind of weird virtual satanic ritual. The Dictionnaire Infernal, a book on demonology that describes organized hierarchy, much like how Milton describes hell in Paradise Lost, was a piece of literature that was written in 1818 by Jacques Auguste Simon Colin de Plancy. At the time of this episode, the longest name I've ever said. Dude, lived a long time too. 87? Good for you, man. Anyways, this book pretty much has any demon you've ever heard of in it, so let's go to a drum lick, hmm? Ah, here we go. Grand Chancellor of the Underworld, Guard of the Sovereign of Demons, President of the High Council of Devils, he was adored by Sepharavim, a vile Assyrian who burned children on his altars. The rabbis say that he shows himself under the form of a mule and somehow the head of a peacock. I like how he seemed confused. I, I think we all are. Question number two that might be on everyone's minds. Why are goats associated with the devil? At this time, we can see how the Zodiac Capricorn can lend itself to the design of a Dromlech. And besides the Mesopotamian mythology, we see goats and the devil connected a lot. This is an image of the Sorcerer, a sketch of a cave painting from Trois Ferres Arrigés, France. 
which I hope I didn't butcher that too much, by Henri Brieux. He claimed that this was the first depiction of a deity on Earth, but his views have since been largely superseded after the latter 20th century. Regardless, this could be considered the first horned deity, a pagan deity. The romantic writings of the 18th century took the Greek god Pan out of classical context to be put in line with their ideals of a pastoral England. This, and along with the general public's decline of familiarity with Greek gods, landed Pan as the lead role in a play about the most vague of things. Horned God. That's it. He went from Pan to Horned God. That's like going from Steve from accounting to white guy. They took some creative liberties with him and eventually became a horned god of the witches. A male horned devil, if you will. The next piece of the puzzle lies in the early days of Catholicism. The pentacle, or pentagram, was a symbol of sealing off demons and rupt Jehovah, but in the same way that an inverted cross is commonly used as an anti-Christian symbol, the inverted pentacle was made to represent demon worship. If you look at the inverted pentacle, you'll notice it bears a striking resemblance to the shape of a goat's head, something I honestly didn't notice until I did the research for this episode. So let's go ahead and compare the two, right? I think we've taken in enough information for one episode. I mentioned earlier that a drama like in 12 has a strong affinity to lightning. Well, it happens to turn out that Adad was the storm and rain god in the northwestern Semitic and ancient Mesopotamian religions. There's a catch though. He wasn't symbolized as a goat. Instead, he was bearded and wore a bullhorned headdress, often holding a club and thunderbolts. Oh, he was their version of Odin. A drama like in both Final Fantasy XII and historical context incites wars between dark and light. So in the instance where he may have originated from the Babylonian god Adar, a war god, that would seem fitting as well. Just as a speculation, but I kind of feel like they went with the Zodiac idea first, picked a handful that would work within the Evil East universe because not all Lukavi are shown. And since the goat demon thing was already a thing in existence, it was just a matter of them putting the rest together. What's written in the bestiary is pretty much word for word the historical background for the real a drama like from his standing against God to his overwhelming power. The lightning abilities most definitely came from the Adad mythology. The model used in 12 has what looks to be peacock feathers at the tail, so nice job fitting those in there. His wings look as though they've been plucked, a nod to being a fallen angel, no doubt. He does have curls that resemble a beard, and the structure of his face lines perfectly with the star of an inverted pentagram. Even though he doesn't follow the description of one single version of a drama like, he does embody many references that are pretty obscure, from the peacock feathers to the wings to the beard to the shape of his head being perfectly in line with a pentagram. I'm just impressed with their design choice and quite frankly surprised they didn't stray from it. I've heard a lot of people say they didn't like 12 as much as some of the other ones because it was too political, but right now it's one for one in my book, so damn good job on the design, guys. Thanks for watching and share this with your friends if you think they'd be into this. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I will also be working on some other things. Check out that for stuff, 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 stuff. See you next episode. Bye.